Round of applause for our drum line. Good afternoon and the warmest of welcomes to each and every one of you here today to celebrate such a significant milestone in the lives of our class of 2021. It's absolutely wonderful to be able to welcome so many family, friends and supporters to celebrate with our very special graduating class. My name is Joel Burnett, Deputy Principal, Cronulla High School. And that's commonly how I introduce myself on the phone. It's really nice to be able to say that today without the awkward pause as you sort of think to yourselves, what has my son, daughter, Zachary <laughs> done this time? So a big warm welcome to everyone here today. Good afternoon. My name is Meg McMullen. Um, I have had the privilege of being Year 12's Assistant Year Advisor for the past two years um, and I welcome you all here today. Um, I would now like to invite Emma McCarthy and Riley Layton to the stage to perform the national anthem. Please be upstanding. choice Please be seated. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Riley. Fantastic. Uh, I'd like to call Carlos Brennan to the stage. Carlos is going to perform our Acknowledgement of Country. On behalf of Cronulla High School, we would like to acknowledge the Darawal speaking people, the traditional custodians upon the land which gathered today. We would like to pay respect to the elders both past, present and emerging of the Gwigal Nation and extend that respect to other in Aboriginal people present today. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. And I'd also like to say thank you to Miss Paris Stasos for all the excellent work that you've done with our Aboriginal students. Um, in uplifting them and your dedication. Thank you. Um, before we get started, I would like to do a bit of housekeeping. So the toilets are located in the clubhouse on the western side of the Oval. Uh, we also have a whole host of COVID rules and regulations that we need to adhere to today. Uh, many are covered already in terms of entry. Um, so thank you for your patience and cooperation with that. Uh, given we're on school grounds or the school site, the rules do differ slightly uh, to those that are of society. So some of the th big things you need to be aware of is around mingling. Um, if you're in a park, it'd probably be different, but that's why we've got everyone spaced out. We really need people to uh, stick to your pods. Obviously, uh, a quick hello and that sort of thing's fine, but uh, if we can avoid mingling, uh, particularly at the end, and I'll need to dismiss everyone at the end, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, Mr Ibrahim's pretty... Uh, pretty keen not to make another appearance on a current affair. So if we could do the right thing, that'd be great. Uh, so as is typically the case uh, when it comes to housekeeping in Cronulla High School, 
we've already had a call from one of the neighbours. I didn't actually even bother asking for the uh, the um, the number plate, but Ben Ritchie, uh, if you could if you could hop up, mate, you've parked over another neighbour, so sort that out, buddy. Today is not only a celebration of. <laughs> It's a joke, Ben. It's a joke, mate. Sit down. <laughs> Today is not only a celebration of the end of Year 12's high school career. It is a celebration of the way that they have overcome adversity and the way that they've rallied around one another to overcome these hardships. On behalf of all the teachers at Cronulla High School, I would like to say that we're very proud of you all and everything that you've achieved during this time at Cronulla High and beyond. I would like to now welcome Mr. Tony Ibrahim to the stage. Whose idea was it to organise Year 12 graduation on the opening day of the Ashes? Mr Burnett, I thought you knew better. We need to get uh, sort out our priorities. For those that are interested, uh, England won the toss, decided to bat Australia. Uh, England are four for 59 at lunch and Mitchell Stark got a wicket on the first ball of the match. Yes, great effort by Mitchell Stark. A warm welcome to Year 12, along with family and friends, as we come together to celebrate the completion of your formal schooling. Year 12 have missed out on a number of milestones and experiences due to circumstances beyond their control. Even though this graduation has been delayed, we are delighted that the easing health regulations now allow us to give them the day they deserve, that will provide them with some great memories. When we walked out of school on June 25, who would have thought that we would not be returning to school on July 13 for the commencement of Term 3? In fact, we had to wait to an easing of the health regulations before we were able to get you back safely on August 16 for a week before the department shut us down. And despite what Jordan White was telling ev everyone, we were not fined. Frustratingly, it turned out that only a few weeks later, the department contacted us to say they liked the model we used to safely return Year 12. They liked it so much that they wanted to share it with other schools. Online learning was tough for everyone, students and their parents, teachers and their families, but it was especially tough for Year 12. In many ways, the students and teachers even though they experienced online learning last year, had to find new methods to teach and learn. With no end in sight and the possibility of the HSC exams being cancelled, it made things even that little, little more harder. Despite all that was going on, Year 12 were asked to continue to work hard, keep studying, complete major works, attend numerous Teams and Zoom meetings, and above all, remain motivated. While many rose to this challenge, there were others who struggled at times. However, fortunately, most were able to bounce back. They also had to deal with not getting the opportunity to complete their trial HSC exams. As a school, this was a huge decision for us. But once we explained our reasons to the students and the conditions we had put around the practice trial HSC exams, they just got on with it. The teachers praised most of the students for the way they approached their practice HSC exams, ensuring they gained the most out of this experience in relation to learning, evaluating their progress and preparing for the HSC exams. In terms of online learning from home, nothing really changed for Bailey. He still came to school every day in Term 3. He was here so often he gave himself his own car spot. 
There were days we even fed him. But to his credit, he also shouted us lunch. Bailey eventually dragged some, some others along. Angus McCall, Morgan, Ryder, Finlay, Jake, Lewis and Angus, and Angus Cunningham, who we, who we then called the P10 crew. For these boys, it was more than just completing their work and study. It was a way to ensure that they stayed connected and were able to support one another. Ingenious if you ask me, but don't tell them I said that. There were others who, while not part of the P10 crew, also spent some time at school. Zach Sado, Carlos, Stephanie, Indiana McPherson, Jessica Codera and Natasha, just to mention a few. Then there was Nick Phelan. He came to school every day in term three for one reason and one reason only, and that was to complete his multimedia major project. Most afternoons we had to kick him out as, as we were leaving. I have to tell you, Mr Burnett and I were very disappointed that Nick never showed us the finished product, but we are sure it will be the best one in New South Wales because of all the time and effort he put into it. Nick Phelan, band six in multimedia, but not too sure how he will go in his other subjects. Thanks to having to deliver care packages and practice HS HSC exams, I now know every street in Kernell and Green Hills. Some of the looks on the faces of parents and students were price, priceless when they opened the door to see me standing there. Hopefully my postman days are over. There are, there are those of you sitting here today who have had to overcome personal tragedies, illness and difficult family and social circumstances. I'm not going to embarrass you by naming you. You all know who you are. What I do want you to know is how proud we are. You were able to cope with the challenges that life throws at you and still manage to focus on your HSC. I would describe some of you as inspirational. I stand here today to farewell a remarkable group of students. They've taken everything that this year has thrown at them, putting up with disruption, uncertainty and constantly changing rules. They have shown understanding patience and adaptability and a willingness to keep moving forward. Their resilience has been amazing. Our Year 12 students have really stepped up and shown what capable young men and women they are. I believe they will be better off for the experience. Now as I do, every, uh, now, as I do this time every year, I would like all Year 12 to please stand. Now that you are standing, I would like you to firstly look over at your family and friends and then to look around at your teachers. While you are doing this, given the year we have had, I want you to think about these two groups of people and the influence they have had on your life and the partnership they have formed that has supported you, encouraged you, laughed and at times even cried with you, been there for you during both the good and bad times kicked you in the backside when needed and put up with you through this whole process. It is for these reasons and many more Year 12 that you should now give these people a round of applause to show your appreciation for getting you here today. Thank you Year 12, please be seated. For some, this journey has been a fairly smooth one while for others it has been much more of a bumpy ride. At times, some have lost the motivation to go on or forgotten why they decided to accept the challenge of undertaking and completing the HSC. However, you've all made it. Some will measure their success by the result they will receive in late January or by the course they are accepted into at university, TAFE or even the job they undertake next year. While for others, success is simply the fact that they have achieved their goal of attaining a HSC. Whatever the reason, you have all made it, and that is something that can never be taken away from you. So once again, well done. There are many exceptional young men and women among you. Many of you have been terrific role models for the other students in the school 
and you will all become outstanding citizens in our society. Over the last six years, I have been very fortunate to witness most of these students grow into fine young men and women. To read the amazing reports of some of our outstanding students, such as Andrew Aguilar, Celeste Anchike, Carlos Brennan, Angus Cunningham, Zach Faruja, Trista Gibson, Luke Hales, Riley Layton, Jake Montgomery Kawabata, Scarlett Mooney, David Yuma, Yumatala, <laughs> sorry David, I did practice, not enough Mr Burnett, sorry. Mackenzie Reeves, Zach Sado, Christopher Townsend, Cameron Turnbull and Matthew Velder, just to mention a, a few, has always been a pleasure. I would like to thank some of our very talented sports people who have represented the school over a number of years. Caden Barnes, Caleb Bonney, Jesse Charles, Holly Diggle, Caelan Donaghy, Kai Fowler, Alex Galea, Trista Gibson, Ace Haslam, Luca Christick, Holly Morell, Amelia O'Brien, Sasha Popovic, Bailey Rains, and Jordan White. All will leave big holes in the sporting area as they have successfully re represented the school in a variety of sports at a number of levels. To observe the creative talents of some of our visual arts students, such as Ella McGall, and just a, a word on Ella, her major work has just been accepted into the Art Express 2022, so I think that deserves a round of applause. For those who don't know that, it, that means hers is considered one of the best pieces of major works in New South Wales. Eva Mora and Jade Vela was breathtaking. Celeste Anchike, Holly Morell and Kyron Bishop impressed us with their drama performances. The culinary delights of our hos hospitality students such as Kia Ibison and Shannon Mercer were to die for. Our talented dancing queens, Paris Hooper, Chelsea, Chelsea Jordan, whose uh, core performance dance was, has been nominated for callback for 2021. So good luck with, with that, Chelsea. Hopefully you'll be selected. Charlie London, Chloe Thomas and Tamsin Ward, most of whom have danced for the school for the last six years, with some even performing overseas. The amazing creative and techn technological talents of our multimedia students, such as Jake Montgomery, Kawabata, Andrew Aguilar and Holly, Holly Diggle, Lauren Grice and Riley Layton, had to be seen to be believed. You would go a long way to find better. We have, we have been very fortunate to have been entertained over the years by the musical talents of Mackenzie Reeves, who likes to be called the Big Mac, uh, and who's also had her performance of Safer nominated for Encore 21. So good luck with that, uh, Big Mac. Amelia O'Brien, Riley Layton and Emma McCarthy, again, some of whom have even performed overseas. The production of school events from our entertainment vet class has certainly continued to improve because of the work and commitment of students such as Celeste and Chike, Emma McCarthy, Zoe Foran, and Charlie London. There are many others who I also could have mentioned who week in and week out have just gone quietly about doing their work and always giving their best. These few examples show that Cronulla High School has served you well and equipped you with the necessary knowledge, skills, experience and values to meet any opportunities and challenges that may lay ahead. I can assure you that these challenges will be many and varied as this year has shown us, society and the world are constantly changing and you have to be prepared to change with it. All this will mean a life of ongoing challenges, learning, opportunities, taking risks and at times uncertainty. In the same way that I feel Cronulla has served you well, I also believe that over the years you have served Cronulla High School well in the way you have applied yourselves to your studies participated in various activities and done much to enhance the reputation of the school in the community. For this, we thank you. Thanks and congratulations must also go to our school captains, Celeste Anchike and Kai Fowler, and our vice captains, 
Charlie London and Gus Kohu for the work they have done leading the prefects and the rest of the school body. You were all terrific ambassadors and fulfilled your duties and responsibilities very well. Special thanks too to Miss Leah Faruja, who has been your year advisor over the last six years of high school and has, been supp and has supported, guided, led and nurtured you over this time. Thanks also to Miss Meg McMullen, who has been your assistant year advisor for two years. Year 12 have been very fortunate to have had these two people with you through this significant time in your lives. Charlie and Fabian, can you please present some flowers to Miss Faruja and Miss McMullen? I'm also very proud of the involvement of our deputy principals, in this case, Mr. B Mr. Joel Burnett. Mr. Burnett gives all his all with every year 12. But this year, I feel that he went above and beyond. All the emails and encouragements that he gave you as a group and individually were outstanding. He really took on the role of a father figure, especially during lockdown. Like me, he was very determined to get year 12 back safely to school ASAP. And we were both even more determined after Kirby Brown, or as we like to call her KB, left his office crying because she believed we would never make it back to school. Fortunately, we did, and it was great to not only see her smile again, but everyone else's smile upon their return. As a kid, I grew up watching Rocky 1, 2, and 3, and as it turned out, 4, 5, and 6, plus the two Creed movies. For many of my generation, the Rocky movies inspired us and brought us and brought on a new training regime like nothing ever seen before. In amongst all the action, there are many messages that we can apply to our lives. This one I have chosen is from Rocky VI, otherwise known as Rocky Balboa from 2006. Mr. Osman. Somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. We have seen in the last two years how life has knocked us down. Some of us have seen this more than others. Regardless, you need to find a way to get back up and keep going. Sometimes the easiest thing is to stay down, blame others and play the victim. It is far more difficult to get back up. Life is not smooth sailing. If you find a way to pick yourself up when you get knocked down, you certainly will be a better person for it. On a personal level, this is something I always strive to do in my life when things get tough. And this is why this quote resonated with me. Finally, on behalf of the Cronulla High School community, I would like to congrat congratulate you on completing 13 years of schooling, the high school certificate and overcoming the challenges that 2021 presented you with. We all wish you the, the best in your future endeavours. I know you will all continue to make us proud. Thank you. I think sometimes um, as a school and as a community, we take for granted the wonderful leadership that we are fortunate to have with Mr Ibrahim. I've been in education for a number of years now and I always hear of people talking about putting the kids first. And I've never seen anyone who does that as consistently, as genuinely and as passionately as Mr Ibrahim. 
And I think a day like today is, is really testament to that. Other schools aren't doing this. Other schools are Zooming and live streaming and, you know, we took a little bit of a chance on the, re on the weather. We didn't factor in the wind. Uh, but this is Mr. Ibrahim's leadership and this is his baby here today. And it's just absolutely fantastic to be able to have so many of you here to share in what is such a special day. So if we would just put our hands together for Mr. Ibrahim, I think that'd be well deserved. <laughs> Speaking of live streams, we do have that as a backup, uh, Morgan Lloyd. Uh, on YouTube, uh, on our school's YouTube, Cronulla High School page. So check that out or um, uh, send that to people if they're out there that, that need to get onto the live stream. Just wanted to mention that one. Uh, now, these group of Year 12s, I tell you what, they have well and truly outstayed their welcome. Uh, this day is usually about three or four months ago. Your teacher's uh, well and truly done. I'm well and truly done. And I'll tell you who else is well and truly done. It's Year 11. Because year 11 would usually be having their moment in the sun right about now and our new school leaders would normally be well and truly ensconced as the school captains of Cronulla High School. They've had a share for a term and so it gives me great pleasure to be able to call school captains for 2022, Charlotte Leprini and Fabian Gustafsson to the stage to give the senior farewell address. Good afternoon, family members, teachers, and most importantly, our new graduates. My name is Fabian, this is Charlotte, and we are the school captains for Cronulla High School for 2022. I'd like to start off by saying that what makes this school so great is the students that attend it, and this cohort is no exception. Upon being asked to create a speech to send off the group that our cohort has so dearly looked up to since day one of year seven is certainly not an easy task to achieve, let alone be able to pull out into one speech. Whilst following a year group through our schooling career, especially through the uncertainties of 2021, I can positively assure you that this year has been a year we as a cohort have so dearly, dearly and so very gratefully had to have had you to look up to. Considering the past year we have been through, we commend and look up to you all so dearly in the way that you have handled things so diligently with such resilience. Since starting high school, I've always had a positive impression of this year group based on academics, sports, and other initiatives representing our school. And I can say confidently that I look up to this grade. Following and filling in the shoes of a cohort so motivated is going to be big shoes to fill. But in saying that, we thank you for setting such high standards for us to ex exceed in the forthcoming future. A large part of the reason I aspired to be a school leader was from the inspiration I drew from watching so many of you present your speeches last year, and I'm sure many of you Many of my fellow prefects can say the same. We congratulate you all for achieving such success amongst a difficult and enduring year. You have all held your heads high throughout the years of your high school career and we congratulate you for finally reaching the delayed end of your high schooling career. As a whole, our grade is big shoes to fill and we take on the challenge to display the same motivation and diligence we saw demonstrated while you completed your HSC course during a six month lockdown, an accomplishment, an accomplishment exclusive to this year group. Each and every one of you should be so beyond proud of yourselves and your achievements. And might I also say for being able to put up with Mr. Burnett for an extended year 12. <laughs> you have all done the job so, so well and Fabian and I on behalf of the rest of the school wish you all well in the next chapters of your lives. And congratulate each and every one of you for your undivided efforts throughout your high school career. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you, Charlotte and Fabian. It is at this time that I would like to give a special mention to a few of our most committed and dedicated students whose attendance in 2021 has been 100%. A massive congratulations to Andrew Aguilar, Max Cooper and Nikita Wool. Please give these students a round of applause.
I would now like to introduce a short video presentation from our local member. This will be followed by a performance from our wonderful Year 12 music class. Good day to all the graduating Year 12 students at Cronulla High School, up, up Cronulla. Congratulations on all that you've been able to achieve this year. I've heard so many great reports about what you've been able to do this year. I've heard about Holly Morrill stepping up and getting her head shaved as part of the world's greatest shave. And Liam Miller had his legs waxed. <laughs> You're braver than me, mate. And you did it all for a good cause. Leander received the Vet Excellence Award. That's an outstanding achievement. And Jesse Charles was part of the state champion baseball team. That's a terrific effort. Through it all, you had the tremendous support from your principal, Mr. Ibrim, and your year advisors, Ms. Farugia and Ms. McMullen, and all the teaching staff. And the Year 12 care packages were a fantastic initiative, so well done to the PNC for all of their efforts and your long-serving sacrifice and things you've been doing for Cronulla for a very long time. Thank you to all the teachers. Thank you for everything you've been doing to support our wonderful Year 12 students as they go into this final stage. I know, your parents know, your teachers know, that your final two years of school haven't been easy. They've been really tough online and in the classroom, but you've stepped up to those challenges, you've adapted to them and you've supported each other, importantly. You can be very proud of yourselves. I am very proud of you. Now you're almost at the high school finish line. It's now just so close, it's all so real. And as you prepare for your final exams, remember to sleep well, really important, and get plenty of exercise. If you feel anxious, please talk to someone you trust about it, a teacher, a friend, your parents. Remember, no exam or assessment is as important as you. Remember that you matter. You matter. You really do. I want you to know that you can always be confident about your future. Please don't be anxious. Despite the challenges of COVID-19, we are really coming through this. Australia is going to have one of the highest vaccination rates in the world. And if you haven't been vaccinated yet, please do so. Our brighter days, they're just ahead. So please study hard, keep chasing those dreams because you can do anything in this great country. Your parents, your teachers and your Prime Minister, we're all so proud of what you've been able to achieve and we're backing you in all the way. So congratulations, Class of 2021, and all the best to you all.
Absolutely fantastic and absolutely wonderful that our Year 12s have had an opportunity to perform today after missing out on so many of those opportunities over the last six months or so. Also, a, a massive thanks acknowledgement to Mr Matt Tanikoff, our head teacher Kappa, music teacher, Delta Goodrum's bass guitarist, rock star and all-round good guy who has organised that performance today so that every student could be involved, which is absolutely brilliant. You've just witnessed firsthand how talented our musicians are, but I'd also like to acknowledge our phenomenal dancers and also our incredible drama students of 2021. It was so unfortunate that these groups weren't able to perform at the peak of their powers, but we know that they will go far regardless. Now, before I throw to your wonderful year advisor, Miss Ferrugia, there's something I need to get off my chest. I know these guys have done it tough, blah, blah, blah. But this really is becoming a little bit too much of a love fest for me. There were plenty of flaws which need to be remembered as well. I distinctly remember the dark days of term four, year nine, where I was left tossing a coin between tendering my resignation or delivering a sermon with the message, be nice. When be nice came out on top, I gave it my best shot, only for Tiana to interrupt me halfway through, look up at the hip and cool PowerPoint I had on the screen with hashtag be nice and ask, what's Bennis? A few things I personally won't miss about Year 12. Max and Sasha, full stop. Now, Max and Sasha showing no real signs of listening to me in business studies, but then finishing my sentences when I started to explain that there are three ways you can write a business case study. Bailey's COVID safe hugs. Watching Maddie Smith arrive late followed a very coincidental four minutes later by Lily and Luana, followed a good half hour later by poor Tegan, <laughs> who I think was late today. Sorry, Tegan. Uh, no one in Year 12 wearing a school shirt under their jersey, filling in forms, applications and paperwork for Indy. But above all else, the thing I won't miss is the daily judgment, snide comments, and outright mocking of my wardrobe. <laughs> Scarlet Mooney, I am looking squarely at you. And I want you to know that my beautiful wife and organiser of my wardrobe is here today <laughs> and she wants to have words with you. All right, enough for me. Let me throw over to your wonderful, fabulous and dedicated year advisor, Miss Leah Ferrugia. Good afternoon. Thank you, sir. Parents, guardians, teachers, students, and Year 12. My name is Leah Ferrugia, and it is with great pleasure and pride that I stand here today as your Year Advisor of the 2021 cohort to celebrate what has been an amazing achievement to enjoy 13 years of academic endeavour culminating in the completion of your HSC. This is truly amazing. I'd like to start by recognising the people who without this achievement would not be possible. Firstly, I would like to thank your parents and carers. It must feel like only yesterday that you were sending your child to the first day of kindergarten. How far they have come. In my opinion, we should be recognising the parents as you have been pivotal, pivotal in your child's success. Getting your child out of bed, I know for some, has been a mission. Having your child appropriately dressed, lunch packed and off to school is sometimes half the battle. And part of it is really instilling that love of education in your child. That's encouraging consistent application in class, homework, assessments, excursions, carnivals, 
it's been never ending. I thank you for working and collaborating with me and Cronulla High School staff over the years to help your child achieve their goals. I would like to thank Rena Hatsey, Joel Burnett and Meg McMullen for consulting with and guiding me through being your year advisor and sometimes an accidental counsellor. I would like to thank the Cronulla High School teachers and executive for providing a caring and nurturing environment for my cohort and allowing them to be the best possible students they could possibly be. So I started the role in 2016 um, and I've been with the year group for six years. It was the same year that my daughter started primary school. My colleagues say that I've completely changed as a person over the last six years. But to be honest, I just can't really see it. <laughs> anyway, get rid of that. In 2016, you started your journey at Cronulla High School. It was also the year of the Mannequin Challenge, the DAB, the Water Bottle Challenge, Pokemon Go. Our Prime Minister was Malcolm Turnbull and many of you were obsessed with Shrek. And our Cronulla Sharks won the NRL Grand Final. Your second week of high school, you were nervous and excited and off to Yarramundi for the Year 7 camp. You were placed into cabins with your new peers and a friend from your primary school. You spent the days kayaking, swimming, rock climbing, archery and completing obstacle courses, taking it all in your stride while making new friends that you would have spent the ups and downs with for the next six years. On camp, there were a couple of cabin incidents, of a night of course. Could we ever forget one student's refusal to go to bed? I remember it being 1.30 a.m. Myself and other staff were trying to encourage this student to go to bed. The only thing that made the student give in and go was me saying, well, I'm going to call Mr Ibrahim at 1.30 in the morning and that worked a treat. I remember dinner on the second night at camp consisted of grilled fish, chips and vegetables. Fish was not a favourite amongst you all and I recall 185 plates of un uneaten cold fish cleverly stacked on top of each other across the halls in the dining room. And at night there were the late night late night runs in the dark to the vending machine that was lit up in the bush. I later found out that it was faulty and was releasing all its 50 cent coins. Many of you connected with new friends and had a lot of fun hanging out in the cabins and getting acquainted and some helped support others with a little bout of homesickness. But it's been lovely to see you all having fun at that disco in the camp also. But camp would not have been complete without a broken down bus stuck out west on the hot Friday afternoon. I was exhausted after three days and I know you all were too. But camp was such a success. In year seven, who could ever forget a few boys catching innocent seagulls in the quad? Their tactic was to hold someone's recess or lunch, lure the seagulls and grab it for dear life. <laughs> they would parade around the northern end of the quad, of course, which was away from the office and the watchful eye of the deputy, frightening everyone in the quad with a flapping seagull and even hiding one in a backpack. <laughs> but not Kia Ibbotson. She was not scared. Who one day had enough of the boy's behaviour. She marched over to teach one of them a lesson. She picked him up from what I heard and dropped him in the garden. That sorted the boys out, along with the help of Mr Humphreys at the time. I've always admired Kia over the years. She had a hard exterior, came across tough in her junior years. She always stood up for what was right, stood up for her peers. She has a heart of gold, organised Christmas gifts for others and truly has a soft insight. Call of Duty computer games was also a highlight amongst the boys and in particular <laughs> the boys in 7C with many a phone call home to stop the gaming but I think you boys won that battle. The school experienced a power outage one day in year 7 in B block, B16 to be precise. Um, I won't go into that story I don't think. But, um, the fascination with birds continued well into year eight, with many of the boys, including Jack McGilvray and his mates, taunting the plover birds on the back oval. Somehow they always had to retrieve their ball from the back fence with the thrill of being chased or bombed by the squawking birds. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, thanks to Jack for the, um, for the entertainment as well. All right, year nine would have had to have been the most challenging year, including the throwing of fruit at the northern end of the quad. So year nine in 2018, I had introduced the inaugural rewards day to Jamboree. This was to be used as an incentive to keep our year group's behaviour in check. I came up with a criteria to allow students to attend based on good behaviour. This included no suspensions, no more than two afternoon detentions and to wear good uniform. We did have an amazing time that day with many of you meeting those expectations. The Year 10 Snow Troop in 2019 was a real highlight for our year and myself. I loved it and we were fortunate to be able to go. Not hitting a kangaroo was so infamously done the previous year on the way down and we did not miss out on the trip before the pandemic hit. Many a tale to be told from the 2019 ski trip and these were shared at lunch in the Banjo Patterson restaurant on the Threadbow ski field and while sitting around the dining tables at night. Highlights inc included Taryn Guthrie dropping a snowboard from a chairlift and having to complete a huge walk down to the bottom of the mountain to retrieve it. Aidan Goodhue, Riley Layton and Jack Schwartz managed to shut down the major Threadbow chairlift for a good hour or so, but don't ask me what they did up there. Ben Ritchie apparently got lost in the snow before lunchtime and as the story goes, had to be rescued in a skidoo by ski patrol and brought down the mountain. I also remember him being mortified when we organised a birthday cake for him and 80 of us singing happy birthday. Nikki Santaguida, Erin Lindsay was stuck on a black run on the very first morning in Threadbow, well beyond their capabilities and it took over two hours to get them down the mountain. Kia's binding broke on a black run too, making, it way, making way for a, an adventurous way down the mountain. Now I know Chelsea Jordan is a good snowboarder and, and from a family of snow bunnies. However, she must have been pushing her limits too hard and ended up in a medical centre with mild concussion. Kirby Brown had a fall whilst boarding around the Pixis, uh, Threadbow Mountain too on the last day and she hurt her wrist. She didn't report it to any staff and she kept it under wraps, literally. Turns out she had broken her wrist and missed out on the netball finals. Tegan Riak meticulously positioned herself skiing behind Dexter Clark and Angus Cunningham on the slopes, she tells me. So when she continuously fell, she was saved while wiping them both out. 2018 and 2019, year nine and 10 girls. You had many ups and downs amongst friendship groups and it took you a few years to become a cohesive group. And I recall many a recess and lunch times mediating friendships and offering tissues in my staff room, along with having girls meetings too. I know you have learnt a lot from these experiences and have grown into fine young women. We have lost many students along the way, through the, although we were lucky enough to gain some wonderful additions to the year that have fit in as though they belonged. One friendship I would like to recognise is Alkira Kennedy and Jan Lee. Alkira, Alkira, you have a heart of gold, are so welcoming and made Jan feel very welcome to Cronulla High. And it's been lovely watching your friendships blossom. The end of 2019, you all look stunning, dressed up for your year 10 formal at Dalton House with the boys sweating it out on the dance floor and Geordie taking centre stage at one point. The awards you gave yourselves made made for a great evening also. Your senior years 2020 and 2021, what a ride it's been for you all. And if I was to think of one word to describe your senior years, it would be unprecedented. Unprecedented is defined as never done or known before. And I'm sure you have all heard this word countless times over the last year. Being normalised into a word that correlates directly with COVID-19. But here my intention is to connect this word with all of you. You are unprecedented. You are a high school class that has done something never known before. Like your teachers, unpre unprecedented. We were thrown into this thunderstorm of uncertainty and irregularities throughout the year. But you fought through it in ways we could never have imagined. You are all capable of taking on any obstacle that may lay in your life. You have all demonstrated resilience throughout the changing teaching and learning nature in terms three and four and your delayed HSC exams. You have all faced a challenging senior school experience that has never happened before and you overcame it 
you made it worthwhile and something that I would call unprecedented. I will miss the spirit you brought to the carnivals with your clever dress-ups. I will miss seeing many achievements of your extracurricular activities and in sport and, pre and being proud of the leadership within your senior years. I will miss the banter with many of you. You know, I have always been in your corner been in your corner, made your, uh, been your advocate, and it's been an honour to watch you grow into fine young adults. I will miss my two year 12 classes and my hospitality students continual asking, can we cook? And the fun and pressure of the couple of catering events that you did on a large scale. As like other teachers, I will also miss my mentor meetings and catch ups on, of the weekend events. Graduating today is not a sad moment, it's a celebration of what you've achieved. I am generally excited by the opportunities that present <laughs> that present before you as our borders and the world begins to open again. Many of you have achieved have achieved success with early entry into universities and colleges and some commencing apprenticeships and work. Many year twelves have informed me of their early entries to university, which include degrees such as Business at Wollongong, Bachelor of Nursing at Notre Dame, Bachelor of Occupational Therapy at ACU and Wollongong Universities, Creative Arts, Law Degrees at UTS and UNSW, Politics, Philosophy and Economics, and many others, including Bachelors in Zoology, Psychology and Paramedicine. I wish you all the success with your exam results and your endeavours. I believe in every single one of you Thanks for being a part of my life and making Cronulla High School proud of you all. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. Whilst working with you, I've seen the dedication and care that you put into your role as year advisor. The students have been really lucky to have you guide them through the past six years of high school. I would now like to call the Cronulla High School captains of 2021, Celeste Unchike and Kai Fowler to the stage to give their final address as school captains of Cronulla High. Good afternoon all, and thank you for joining us to celebrate the graduating students for 2021. We would like to take this opportunity to recap our senior years and reminisce on how far we have come. Our stage six has possibly been the longest two years of our lives, but we promise to keep our speech succinct. Firstly, special thanks must be given to the valiant efforts of our parents as they were forced to look after us during lockdown despite the belief that year 12 would be the year we grew up and found independence. All jokes aside, through the uncertainty that fate us, we were given a guiding light to help us along this tumultuous path. <laughs> the efforts of the staff and teachers who gave us hope filled us with confidence and prepared us for a very different year. Their efforts will not be forgotten. I think as a year group, we can all commend the endless effort and stress Mr. Ibrahim, Mr. Burnett, Ms. Lawson, Ms. Geldart and Ms. Ferugia and the rest of the staff went through in providing support for this fractured year. Thank you for the care packages and the care you all provided this year and for the past six years. Two years ago, on our first, first day of year 11, we were bombarded with information about exam prep and the HSA and thus the countdown commended. There was an atmosphere of stress and excitement as we entered into our final stage of high school. Senior classes felt more important and there was an added feeling of motivation with this new year. This was, of course, only until lockdown came and as our daily routine struggled, so did our enthusiasm. Now, of course, the lockdown experience was different for everyone. For some, it felt like a summer vacation, while others struggled, struggled with never-ending to-do lists and some just found themselves floating in the middle. 
but a common experience was the uncertainty. There was the uncertainty of back to school dates, of changing COVID rules, and the relentless uncertainty of what the HSC would look like. But during this unpredictable time, we learnt valuable skills and lessons that will only continue to aid us in the future. We quickly adapted to different learning styles, new technology, and through trial and error, overcame procrastination and acquired discipline. Along with the hardships of lockdown, many of us have suffered through our own difficulties and, lad and sadly for some, the loss of those close to us this year. Whilst this, adversity has ugh, whilst this adversity was often very personal, I believe we came together as a community of young men and women to create an environment that promoted strength, resilience and support. Through these trying times, we have come closer and closer together and developed friendships which I have no doubt will stand the test of time. Now, Celeste and I are unable to explore all of these hardships that our year was forced to overcome as we promised to keep our speech short, so we will turn to some brighter notes. Because of these experiences, the 8th of December is now a date that will fill us with pride. We can look back on our efforts and acknowledge that we have successfully made it through the most uncertain of times. And the most important thing is that we congratulate ourselves for continually pushing forward with a smile on our faces. There is a poem by Emily Dickinson entitled, Hope is the Thing with Feathers. Many of you are probably familiar. The poem describes hope as a bird living within the human soul. This quote seems fitting, as one of the main things that pushed us through these uncertain times was hope. Our hope for change, our hope for success, and our hope for our futures. In the face of adversity, we may have crumpled, felt lost or hopeless, but it was our persistence and hopefulness, amongst many other qualities, that pulled us through to the end, to today. Thank you staff and parents for continually supporting us and creating a positive environment for us to grow. Of course, our uncertain futures will lead to new stresses and new worries, but the lessons that we have been taught and taught ourselves over the last six years are what will accompany us through the unknown future ahead. Congratulations to the year 12, we wish you well. England five for 108. Uh, thank you so much Celeste and Kai for your thoughtful and kind words. I've greatly enjoyed getting to know you both over the past five terms in particular. You've done a wonderful job as captains and done so in your own ways. Celeste and I have bonded over her wonderful and my terrible Spanish. She is the consummate professional, super organised, keeping me on my toes in her po polite yet beautiful nature. And Kai, more a last minute kind of guy, but by no means any less effective because of that. I was really touched that, he, uh, that you wanted a small piece of me to be with you all this week at your formal by pinching one of my ties. You've both been wonderful role models in our school and I thank you for your service and dedication. With a lack of assemblies and presentations, our leadership group of 2021 have not had the opportunities which we would have liked. Yet they have established their own legacy. Firstly, they have worked closely with Lowe's to develop a new girls' school pant, which will be available in the new year. We use this as an opportunity to develop the students' leadership, in particular around the Mark, Quain, uh, sorry, Mark Twain quote, it's better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak and remove all doubt. Unfortunately, Jake learnt this the hard way. I'm not sure if he was bored at listening to all the talk of girls' pants, but he contributed to the conversation that he had a few concerns with the boys' pants, which he would like to air. The representative from Lowe's very politely said, oh, really? That's interesting. Because of the 200,000 pairs of those pants we have sold, I have never once heard a complaint. Thus ended the career of Jake Montgomery, fashionista. The other area of impact this leadership group have had is on our morning assembly. Yearning for a way to make a difference and highlight real issues affecting young people, 
We collaborated on the idea of an awareness speech to be delivered by a member of the leadership team each Friday morning. Not one to slowly dip her toes in the water, Celeste led from the front and decided that week one should be tackling the issue of sanitary products for homeless women. Despite my nervousness, this was so well received that Celeste raised over $700 for a charity targeting this issue. And a new cornerstone of Cronulla's assemblies was born. It was cut short due to lockdown, but I was so pleased when our assemblies returned recently and year 11 picked this, picked this idea up and have carried on the tradition. Speaking of school leaders, it is now time to introduce our fabulous vice captains, Charlie London, and Te Manawa Gus Kohu. They have done a wonderful job of leading the school and contributing to the rich community of Cronulla over the past 12 months. So with much trepidation, I hand the microphone to Charlie and Gus. Good afternoon, teachers, students and guests. My name is Charlie London and this is Gus Corhu and we are the Vice Captains of 2021. Today we would like to take a moment to reflect on the past six years at Cronulla High. One of the greatest experiences we've had at Cronulla High School is some of the unique personalities which have been developed over the years. The sort of people who make you feel like a side character in a greater story. I think the epitome of this phenomenon has to be Ewan Baum Wild. <laughs> Ewan's personality is probably best summed up as being some sort of discount Tom Cruise. Uh, it's as if he managed to pirate a copy of Top Gun and installed it directly into his head. And if his existence alone wasn't enough to cement him as the main character or protagonist, he was also given greater legitimacy once we gave him a fancy badge and authority over anything Kappa related. Another wonderful character at Cronulla High School is Stephanie. I think the best way to describe Stephanie is insanely gullible and often a little clueless. She can be found roaming the quad, striking conversations or causing chaos wherever she goes. I think almost anyone who has had an encounter with Stephanie probably has some form of whack story. A personal favourite was convincing her I hunt and farm possums to keep my family fed or the countless times she's tried to attack me. Overall, I'd say she's probably one of the most entertaining students in the cohort. Next on the list is none other than Nikki Phelan. Nikki only has two fully fleshed out conversations, those being the incompetence of the Liberal government and anything in regards to an electronic device for storing and processing data typically in binary form, according to instructions given to it in a variable program. Computers. That coupled with his monotone and extremely soft voice makes for an entertaining scene when he'll spew techno babble at a computer illiterate teacher or discuss at length the intricacies of the code he's just written whilst you pretend to understand. <laughs> Nikki's interactions with other students is also comedic gold. Nikki's interactions with Ben in particular were absolutely stellar. The two exchanging insults back and forth across the computer lab whilst Mr. Hollywood stood in the crossfire. As a year group, we have seen many of these people come and go. We may hardly remember most of them now, but that can't be said for all. This is where I'd now like to take a moment to talk about those we have lost, starting with the legend himself, Benjamin Giggy. Ben left his own special mark on the school, which continues to stick with us even after he sadly left at the end of year 11. Not much needs to be said for the icon that is Ben, but we wish him all the best in his new career. Moving on from that, Tyrese was a student who holds a very special place in most of our hearts. Even though his time at Cronulla was brief, and he spent most of it either sleeping distracting the entirety of Miss Crick's drama class or rocking up to some lessons 45 minutes late, Tyrese made a lasting impression on us all. So uh, let's set the scene for our next character. You've just sat down for the morning assembly. Everyone begins to quiet down as the morning announcements begin. But you hear something. At first, a soft rumbling sound like thunder in the distance. 
Then it becomes louder and louder, churning up rock and earth as it emanates from the entrance of A Block. The sound is now absolutely deafening as Ario Kosrabi breaks the sound barrier, sparks flying off the back of his suitcase as he's speeding down the aisle. And no, the sparks weren't hyperbole, that genuinely happened. And although Ario isn't here anymore, legend says that if you listen carefully enough, you can still hear the spirit of his roller bag sweeping the quad. For anyone wondering what Ario is doing these days, the last we heard from him was when he had a fight with Nikki Phelan earlier in the year about who is the greater techno wizard. Another student who didn't leave us, but I'm sure at some point many teachers wish he did, is Zach Sado. Zach has definitely had an eventful time at Cronulla High, wrapping up with more suspensions than a spider has legs and detentions than I can count on my hand. Some teachers would say that Zach was a menace, but if you ask particular students in our year, they say he's a genius. Zach's misdemeanors included Zach quoting a particularly famous vine to a teacher, which unfortunately I can't quote today, but let's just say it had something to do with chicken strips, <laughs> and getting his fingers stuck in a cupboard. My personal favourite was when Zach locked Mr McGrath out of our Year 10 English lesson, only for Sir to ask who locked me out, and if they put themselves forward, they wouldn't get in trouble. Poor Zach raised his hand and lands a one-week in-school suspension. Speaking of Mr McGrath, he always followed through with his dis discipline, but he could never quite catch Lily Queenan, who still hasn't sat her arvo from three years ago. Cronulla High certainly has its fair share of peculiar and iconic locations, uh, whether that be the favela that is the demountable classrooms or the nuclear test sites that are D14 and A17. But as many of you may know, particularly Chris Townsend, there is no place more horrific than the intersection between the D Block and B Block Bridge. B Block makes a Wuhan wet market look sanitary. Every morning, hundreds of students battle for control of the intersection. Intense congestion and pushing provides every student with high G training and on particularly hot days the chance to sample every student's deodorant, perfume or lack thereof. On the other hand, you will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy than the canteen. Complementing the demountable slums are Eshe's willing to fight tooth and nail for donations. It is most certainly the biggest similarity we have with our logo. In year 11, we saw some improvements made to the school. One of the most impactful was the changes to the bathrooms. Students across the school were so eager to see these improvements that they took every spare moment they had to visit the new addition. I'm of course referencing the addition of air freshener. If you don't understand my reference, then you definitely didn't spend much time in the amenities and have a full set of working lungs. <laughs> Cronulla High has provided many of us with amazing opportunities in a range of areas from sporting competitions to performing arts companies and academic programs. However, none of this matters if you don't look the part. There is a very fine green line between what is an acceptable sock at Cronulla and what's not. If you're not wearing the correct school uniform, you must collect a small blue piece of paper, which will definitely end up scrunched up at the bottom of your bag, alongside long forgotten merits and the new pack of pens you bought to replace the 15 you lost last week. As a year group, we have been taught by some of the best teachers the public school system can offer. These teachers are the ones that leave us with the critical life skills needed for the real world. Thanks to the entirety of the PDH staff room, we have been taught the importance of exercise. Any type of exemption from sport is not taken lightly, even when you're in cast and crutches. This staff room has also shown us that if you repeat your lie enough, just about anyone will believe it. Mr. Sheldon, please do share what screen, skin cream you use to look that good at 65. The teachers are the ones who have helped us and shaped us into the people we are now. In doing so, they have provided us with some very important values and beliefs. Mr. Miners has taught us the importance of political values and how to not drive a vehicle into a tree just after getting your driver's license. Mr. Surridge has also taught us to not lick fridges, otherwise you shall be missing your taste buds. Deputy Principal Mr. Joel Burnett. I mean, does the man really need an introduction? Well, he thought so the first time he entered the school grounds. 
There is nothing stranger than watching this fresh deputy waltz his way up on the podium like he owned the place, where he proceeded to dox himself to the entire school. And this strange man only built a greater reputation when he proclaimed himself as the Grinch a few weeks later, unleashing a campaign and crackdown on truancy and detention dodges. Whatever his intentions were, he definitely made some interesting first impressions. But to my surprise, Bernie Bananas soon became a teacher of legendary status. Friendly and always up for a bit of banter, it isn't hard to strike up a conversation with good old Bernie. Couple that with some pathetic dad jokes and some inspiring speeches, and you have what can only be described as the perfect teacher. And I don't think I'd be alone in arguing that it was Mr. Burnett and his bubbling personality which kept many of us afloat during the plague and has helped to keep his, this cohort from being driven into absolute chaos. Mikhail, sorry, Michael Miners, revolutionary and political theorist. He's a simple man with a simple goal. Empower the youth through a mix of hip hop and a healthy dose of Marxism. Or so his students always seem to betray him. It's not uncommon to find posters strewn across the school featuring Mr. Miners photoshopped onto a variety of socialist figureheads. And whether or not he is ever successful in overthrowing the capitalist system, maybe we can all rejoice in knowing that the real treasure was not the inevitable revolution, but the comrades we made along the way. Moving on to Craig Chantler. <laughs> Craig, he really is the yin to Mr. Sheldon's yang. And whether you met him through Duke of Edinburgh or were blessed enough to score him as a PDH teacher, you know that with Craig, you'll be cruising through the course. <laughs> and my final teacher, Miss Fairweather. Long gone, but never forgotten. Whilst I never personally had Miss Fairweather as a teacher, I did get my fair share of secondhand experience. You see, my year eight English class was situated directly across from hers, and let me say, there was some clear juxtaposition. <laughs> Whilst our class bumbled about like your average class of year eight savages, Miss Fairweather's dare not move. <laughs> she ruled with an iron fist, and I'll never forget the fear on their faces. No doubt, I'll never understand what that class truly went through, but just the thought of it sends a chill down my spine. When we look back at our time in high school, we can acknowledge that we have all been through a lot. We've had each other's backs through ups and downs, gains and losses, particularly the loss of the giant cookies from the canteen. And I'm sure, regardless of what you will willingly admit, we wouldn't trade our high school experience for any other. I'd just like to say a quick thank you to my mum and dad for always motivating me and trying, making me try my best in any situation. I know I haven't made it easy for you, but I appreciate it more than I can express. I would also like to thank Mr. Burnett and Mr. Ibrahim, both of your efforts throughout our high school experience, especially during the past few terms, have definitely not gone unnoticed. I speak for all of us when I say that Mr. Burnett's long inspirational emails will be missed and that we couldn't have asked for better role models to prepare us for the journey ahead. So while I'm up here, I'd like to take this chance to say that I lost the game. Um, but other than that, that marks the end of our speech. And with nothing left besides our upcoming HSC results, we will now have our annual quote from April Jury. Good luck, because you're going to need it. <laughs> Vice Captains Charlie and Gus signing off. Thank you, Charlie and Gus. I have to say, Gus, I'm really going to miss teaching our modern history class together and all of the props and costumes you brought along the way. Um, I would now like to ask Miss Leah Ferugia and Mr Tony Ibrahim to the stage to present our class of 2021 with their graduation portfolios. Please be aware that photos will be taken of all students receiving their certificates and these will be made available on social media.
Okay, it's with great pleasure that we announce um, the Year 12 Enterprise Awards. First up is Andrew Aguilla, who received first in geography. <laughs> Celeste and Cheek, first in drama and first in entertainment vet. Caden Barnes. <laughs> Tiana Anderson isn't present today. Caden Barnes. Here he is. <laughs> Kyron Bishop. Caleb Bonney. <laughs> you and Bowen Wild. Carlos Brennan. <laughs> Finn Bridgewater, who received diligence in construction vet. Louis Briggs. <laughs> Lauren Bright. Chloe Brown. <laughs> Jessica Brown. Diligence in biology, diligence in community and family studies and diligence in mathematics standard. Well done. Jet Brown. <laughs> K 
Kirby Brown, who received first in industrial technology, timber and furniture. Well done. Bronte Buckton isn't here with us today. Indy Bullion. Jesse Charles, Diligence in Modern History. Dexter Clark. Sophie Collins. Max Cooper, Diligence in Economics. Lucas Coots. <laughs> Jessica Cordero, Diligence in Mathematics Standard. Angus Cunningham, Diligence in PD Health PE. <laughs> Thanks, Angus. Holly Diggle. Jackson Dolman. <laughs> Kaylin Donaghy. Tams and Donovan. <laughs> G 
Jamie Erskine. Zachary Ferrigia, Diligence in Mathematics Advanced. <laughs> Zoe Foreign. Kai Fowler. Alex Galea is in here today. Jordan Gee. Trista Gibson. Aiden Goodhue, Diligence and Geography. <laughs> Lauren Grice, Diligence in Modern History. Taryn Guthrie. Luke Hales, first in mathematics extension two, first in physics, diligence in chemistry and diligence in mathematics extension one. Well done. Eden Hamilton.
Ace Haslam, first in sport, lifestyle and recreation. Jordy Haynes Lavelle. <laughs> Lana Hedges, Diligence in Ancient History. Paris Hooper, first in dance. <laughs> Taj Hooper, first in construction vet. Wilson Howard. Jackson Humphreys. Kia Ibbotson. Brandon Inglis. Chelsea Jordan, diligence in dance and diligence in English standard. <laughs> Tiani Kasbarian. First in Community and Family Studies. <laughs> Up you come. Alkiri Kennedy, Diligence in Society and Culture. <laughs> so 
again. Shannon Keohan. Sam Nain Kuhn. Indiana Cox. Timanua Kohu. Dennis Kravchenko. Luca Christic. Tiana Lawrence. Jan Lee, Diligence in English Standard. Riley Layton, Diligence in Industrial Technology Multimedia, Diligence in Mathematics Extension 1 and Diligence in Physics. Erin Lindsay. Morgan Lloyd. Charlie London, Diligence in Entertainment Bet.
Benjamin Lomez. Jack McGilvray, Diligence in Earth and Environmental Science. Indiana McPherson. Eva Maurer, Diligence in Industrial Technology Multimedia. Ben McAllister. Angus McCall, Diligence in Industrial Technology, Timber and Furniture. Emma McCarthy, Diligence in Music. Ellen McGaw, Diligence in Earth and Environment, Environmental Science and Visual Arts. Shannon Mercer, First in Hospitality Vet. Liam Miller. Jake Montgomery Kawabata. First in industrial technology multimedia, first in Japanese, first in English standard. Diligence in English Advanced, Diligence in History Extension. Well done. Great work. Scarlett Mooney, first in English Standard and Diligence in PD Health PE. Finley Moore. Correct. <laughs> Holly Morell, Diligence in Drama.
Seth Muir. Victoria Murray, first in, in, in history extension and first in modern history. <laughs> Isaac Nasrallah. Leander Newbe, I try. <laughs> the Vet Excellence Award goes to Leander. Okay, David Numatawalu, first in biology, first in chemistry, first in mathematics advanced, first in mathematics extension one, first in PD Health PE, first in science extension and diligence in English advanced. Well done. Alana Novelli Rodriguez. <laughs> Amelia O'Brien. Ryder O'Donnell. <laughs> Ashley Ostapiv. Nicholas Phelan. <laughs> Ashley Picken isn't with us today. Sasha Popovic, Diligence in Legal Studies. <laughs> Amina Powdich. Lily Queenan. <laughs> Hi.
Heidi Quintano. Bailey Rains. Mackenzie Reeves, first in music. <laughs> Lily Rubin. Tegan Riak. <laughs> Benjamin Ritchie, Diligence in Sport, Lifestyle and Recreation. Sienna Roxburgh, Diligence in PDHPE. Taylor Ryan McLaren, first in science and culture, diligence in business studies. <laughs> Zachary Sato, first in business studies, economics, earth and environmental science, English advanced, legal studies and first in mathematics standard. Well done, Zach. Nicolina Santaguida. Taylor Schneider. Jack Schwartz. <laughs> Ch 
Abigail Sharon. Lily Sherlow. Olivia Sinclair, Diligence in Mathematics Standard. Andrew Skopetis, Diligence in English Standard. Emma Skopetis. Madison Smith. Tanisha Southern. <laughs> Zach Straker. Luana Texera Kiko. <laughs> Chloe Thomas, first in ancient history. Christopher Townsend, Diligence in Japanese. <laughs> Nicholas Townsend. Cameron Turnbull, Diligence in Biology, 
diligence in mathematics, mathematics advanced and diligence in science extension. Reith Turner. Annalise Tweed, Diligence in Community and Family Studies, Diligence in English Standard and Diligence in Legal Studies. <laughs> Stephanie Ah. Uh. Matthew Velder, first in English Advanced, first in Extension 1 English and first in Extension 2 English. Well done. <laughs> Natasha Valkowski, Diligence in Hospitality Vet. Jade Vella, first in design and technology and first in visual arts. <laughs> Mathura Vowain, diligence in business studies. Vakashan Vajanik. <laughs> Tams and Ward, first in food technology, diligence in dance and diligence in English standard. Jordan White, Diligence in Food Technology. <laughs> Lewis Williams. Paris Williams. Oh, 
Friday. Last but not least is Nikita Wolf. Congratulations, Year 12. Give yourselves a round of applause. Well done and we'll see you tonight. So, I had to start this video somewhere and I thought the best thing I could do is give you all a little bit of hope and that's that this assembly should, in theory, almost be over. So just hold in there. We're going to make it out together. Uh, so... We've had enough of speeches and grandiose talks. It's time we moved on to something a little more boring, uh, and that is listening to you guys. Uh, you see, as you probably know, I was given a little bit of an impossible task by none other than everyone's favourite, uh, Deputy Mr Joel Burnett. And through a mix of plague, procrastination and poor planning, this particular task was going to be a, a little bit of an uphill battle, dwarfing the incline that is Bait Bay Road. Uh, we didn't have any teachers, there were no skits, it was just a single student and a spectacularly horrible outsourcing incident, <clears throat> Leander and Karen. But the show had to go on. After all, it was supposedly already on the program. So, in the meantime, just buckle up, strap in, like I said, it's almost over. We're gonna get there. Okay. Um, cool. Mr. Tenikoff, of course. Mr. Osmond. Mr. Osmond. As and well. Miss Ward. I like can't forget Lang, Miss, Miss Lang as well. And Mrs. Gelbart. Oh my god, all of them. All of them. <laughs> Every teacher. <laughs> Sheldon, yeah. Michael Miners. Oh, there's a lot of Sheldon. Sheldon, 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 Miss Lang. Um, Sheldon. Miss Lang. Um, tied between Mr. Skibris and Miss Thesos. I would say Stace. I love her. <laughs> um, definitely Skibs and Miss Cleary. Um, Mr. Cherry and Miss Lyle. I have four, so. <laughs> <laughs> Or the younger years because they're all 
Um, how many kids there are here? Two. So yeah, so the, many over, many. the overpopulation problem yes, in this school. I suffocate, I would say. I was about to say, like, just every other year. Seven, like, in general, yeah, you seven. The canteen yeah. line. The canteen line, oh my god. Leander. Gus Kohu. Leander and Gus Kohu. Gus Nikki. smells bad, so. Yeah, I won't miss that. The amount of exams that we had, um, 22 demountables. <laughs> um. Oh, fake friends. <laughs> uh, not really sure. Alex. It's actually pretty annoying. I think we know. Miss Roddy. The structure it gives my life gets me out of bed. Mm -hmm. Getting to see my friends every day. <laughs> Mr. Burnett's really inspirational stories. Dad, do we have to read this every night? <laughs> <laughs> this is really boring. What? Culture. <laughs> <laughs> no culture. Uh, uh, Sheldon. <laughs> Sheldon's morning now. Uh, Mr. Burnett. <laughs> Mr. Joel Burnett. Burnett. Yes. Like half Burnett. of the teacher Love population. Yeah. yeah. And like seeing him dance every day. Definitely lunchtime. I think it's always <laughs> this hard. The canteen. And the canteen oh, and yeah. the wrap. Oh, yeah. Face in the bathroom. <laughs> 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 uh, Billy Rossi. Billy Rossi. Joel Burnett. Yeah, yeah my teachers. Yeah. All well, my friends. Some Just like lunchtime. Yeah. Yeah, yeah lunchtime. Hamble. Hamble, yeah. yeah. Well, we can't play now, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Zay's quotes. Yeah, those were inspirational. Yeah. Multimedia. <laughs> Mr. Burnett. I miss Mr. Burnett. Some people. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the canteen food. Oh, the people I meet are like this. <laughs> and not Alex again. It's pretty annoying. Um, social aspect? Yeah. yeah. I think, like, mostly, like, friends or not. Like, especially people that we haven't, like, talked to. Yeah. I would say teachers and you and Van Wild. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to interrupt this next segment with an important question for the audience, and that is, have you seen my friend Kyron Bishop? Kyron has been missing for months now. He doesn't show up to get food on a Thursday, and he doesn't show up at school. The last I'd heard of him, he'd gone to Paris, and to be honest, I don't know how he could afford that or what he's doing there, but please, if you've seen him, if you know if he's okay, contact me. And even better, Kyron, if you're watching this, come home. We miss you. Will Scott. <laughs> Finley Moore. Uh, Luke Chivers. Ace has. <laughs> Kaden Barnes. Judson Kutch. John O'Connor. Um, he's dropped out. Is it Jack or Jake? Jack Devine. Jack, I don't know. Jack Devine. Luke yeah. Ailes. Stood next to me, roll cool. Couldn't resist. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> 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 oh, I can't say that. <laughs> Oh, who is it? Oh, Miss Fairweather. Oh, it's probably Sheldon. Oh, Barnes. Okay. Yeah, who was it? Who was it? Belinda Ward. <laughs> <laughs> um, mine was Lewis Williams. Mine was probably Sensei Pulos. <laughs> and mine was Kyle, obviously. <laughs> I think everyone knows that. Uh, Miss Ransom. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, Luke Ockwell. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Johnny Kaspari. Miss John Friday. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be Sorrento, is it? <laughs> Sorrento. Um, Johnny! Probably year seven. Probably Paige Fleming. <laughs> yeah, guaranteed Sorrento. Easily Miss Yours. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, Miss Sean Franny or Miss Srensu. Um, okay, so embarrassing for us. It was Jack. Sorry, Taylor. Um, Guy Rombo. Um, Will Scott. Zane Perry. Yeah, definitely Zane Perry. Mine was Jet Mine was, um, Finley. 
a skip because I couldn't get this. Um, I think Carl. Or <laughs> 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 Key Lucas Coots. Oh my god. Um, well, I have to do Oscar Oh, yeah. That's oh, a what a tie. <laughs> oh no, you're skipping me. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, she pretty much she dragged me into a web, and I, I got stuck there for a long time, longer than I care to admit. But you know, hey, she was a beautiful girl. Don't know where she at, but shout out to her. Uh, Alexia Day. Um, well, I had two before Ruth, but I'm gonna leave you guessing. Oh my god. <laughs> um, Okay, bit of embarrassing one. I'm gonna say Alex Scalia, you're so in camp. <laughs> <laughs> My one would be um, Will Scott. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Chelsea. Um, Carlos Breton, because I have a story in year seven. Um, I had to walk, like, like, walk past the road, and there was like a walkway, but I didn't. That I was just standing in the middle of the road and Carlos and his other sister had to come and save me because I was about to get hit by a car. And that's how, yeah. Gus, you're my first crush. I'm not saying. <laughs> Embarrassing. No. I'm not saying. No one. <laughs> that one's Alex for sure. <laughs> job but also loaded. I'll be working for the government but somehow I'm still loaded. <laughs> um, rich. That's Apparently all. we're all gonna be loaded. Yeah we're loaded. Yeah, yeah we're famous. Or traveling. Traveling would be nice. Directing some movies. Yeah. Um, hopefully rich and successful. Yeah. 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 Should we yeah. yeah. agreement? <laughs> okay. Yep. I, do. I don't know, you just have to look in the future. It's, uh, it's one of those things oh. that you can't really think. You just have to check. Um, <laughs> pulling over some people. Cop, by the way. For reference. <laughs> um, As an occupational therapist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, a teacher. High school teacher. Just I'm going to punch you teacher. Teacher. Well, there was this one time. <laughs> it all started when I bought this strawberry oak from the canteen. And then I decided, hang on, I've got a bit of 
<laughs> and that was me. It's not on camera. No, I don't think I don't think I could say what I did. I <laughs> certainly hitting Geordie in the head with a shoe. <laughs> well, uh, I've thrown many apples at Year Seven. <laughs> yeah, the, the fruit fights are always pretty good, but I've done a lot of questionable. <laughs> I'm going to keep it PJ, that's enough. I've got no idea, to be honest. <laughs> Probably some some shenanigans in Miss Jodie Vanon's class oh. and uh, Hargraves jumping out the window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the jumping out the window and I broke Donnie's finger once. <laughs> I don't really have an answer to this, so I've done a lot of bad stuff while I've been here at Cronulla High, but you know what, it's just all part of the experience. Um, bullying Morgan. Bullying Morgan. Oh, yeah. Engaging in conversation with Ben Gigi for more than 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and throwing an apple at Kai in your sensitive areas in your seven. I would say telling Miss Webb that Sensei Claus is my daddy and getting in a lot of trouble. Oh. I don't know. My most questionable thing that I've done is when we were doing home learning in year 11 and I used to zoom in on various teachers such as Mr. Kelly and Mrs. Skibris with the Snapchat filters on and made them look a little bit cute, so yeah. Well, you see. Well, <laughs> no, um, spraying too much air freshener in the bathroom. Um, dropping Brock Howard in the back over in PE. Air freshener in the bathroom. Yeah, same, air freshener in the bathroom. <laughs> the manga, um, Play with air freshener. Guys, it's December. You guys are supposed to graduate like three or four months ago. Enough, cut it off. We are done here. Well done, Gus. Have I got sound? Is that working? Yep. Look, thank you so much. I know we ran a little bit over, but it's all about the kids, and they uh, they really enjoyed that last video. So a big thanks to Gus for putting that together. Uh, look, we're going to play one last song as Year 12 get up and make their way out. A reminder that uh, mocktails start at 6 o'clock. Thank you so much for sticking with us this afternoon. Uh, summer in Australia, eh? Cue the uh, cue the music, Mr. Osman. Say